In September of 2016, Christine, my wife, and I had the opportunity to take a vacation to Italy, and our first stop was Verona. And Verona is a beautiful town, very walkable, and it has, it's known for the quantity and quality of its archaeological sites, Roman sites, which include an intact Colosseum in the center of town that was built in 30 AD and is still in use today for operatic purposes. It's really amazing. Now, one of the joys of going to Italy is, of course, the food. So for our first night in Verona, a local person told us to try out this restaurant, small, tiny restaurant, off the beaten path in the neighborhood. And we went there, and it was small. There were maybe four tables inside and four or five tables on the sidewalk outside. And we were just loving it. I mean, we were enjoying the food, we were enjoying the wine, and just having a great time being in Italy, talking about all the things we had seen and done that day and planning what we'd do the next day, when a man uh, approached us carrying a rose, and he asked me to purchase the rose for Christine. Now, I was a little annoyed of having our dinner interrupted like this, and I just out of hand, but politely dismissed him, saying, no, no thank you. We'd rather not. And he didn't leave. He insisted that I buy the rose. And, and he actually said, y you must buy. Now, his insistence, unfortunately, triggered my guy brain, which it actually goes on automatic in any confrontation. And I don't handle uh, confrontation or challenges well. And now I'm upset and I'm angry because, I mean, here we were having a nice dinner, he interrupts us, and I say politely, no thank you, and he refuses to, he ignores that, no thank you, and decides he's gonna stay, and now I have to refuse him again, which I did. And I'll never forget what he then said. But I have nothing. But it was too late for me. I didn't consider his response. I didn't reflect on his response. I was in full-blown guy brain mode, and I, without thinking, said to him, will you please leave us alone? And he left. Well, that incident sort of put a dent in our evening. And I was replaying the scene over and over in my head, uh, pu putting my own actions in the best possible light so I could justify <laughs> what I had done. But without the immediate confrontation, uh, you know, common sense, empathy, Compassion, common decency, snuck in, penetrated, and overthrew my guy brain. And another way of saying that is reality and clarity set in. A man had just told me, I have nothing. And I refused to help him. Now, I have always considered well-to-do people, wealthy people who are not generous, people I judge should and could help other people but don't, I have always considered them to be insensitive, selfish jerks. But the guy with the rose would certainly have seen Chris and I as rich. I mean, he would have seen us as people who had the money to come from America, live in a hotel, go out for dinner and wine. He would, rightly so, consider us rich. And I realized with horror that I was the insensitive, selfish jerk. And that realization brought shame, remorse, and change. Because Chris and I had a long conversation about this, and while we couldn't help the man with the rose, we decided that for the rest of our time there, we would both have a pocket full of Euro coins that we could give out to anybody who asked for money. And yes, we knew that if we did that, maybe some people who weren't truly needy would get money from us. But we also knew there would be people who had nothing, and the little we could give would help a little.